In this guide, we're going to discuss indexes in SQL. And I thought quite a bit about the best way to understand indexes, because if you've never worked with them before, they may seem a little bit foreign. And so I think this is one of the better ways of thinking about it. I have a set of text lines right here. And so you could imagine that each one of these items is actually a record in the database. So I wanted to kind of strip out the entire idea of, you know, of showing MySQL Workbench and all of the things around it because those things were all distracting when it came to understanding just the basic high-level concept of what an index does. We'll go into what an index actually is right after this. But let's imagine that we have a ton of records. So you can see that we have record after record after record. And let's imagine a scenario where we need to find a specific record. Well, if we do not have an index, then what we're essentially going to be doing or what's going to be happening behind the scenes is MySQL is going to say, OK, is it this post? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. This one? No. And it's going to keep on going down. It's going to check every single post and then who knows how long it's going to be until you find the one you want. So if you had a scenario where you had 5 million posts and records in your database, you're going to be sifting through a lot of content. And so this is going to be really annoying. So what I did is I'm actually looking for this line right here. So this is the one line I put in there. It's called what I am really looking for. So if I were to search through my database for what I am really looking for, this could be incredibly slow when it comes to finding it. And so that's really, that's what I wanted you to think about was why indexes are even necessary. And it comes down to the fact that an index will allow us to speed up this process because right now we have to look line by line. But what happens if, let me go back up to the top, and what happens if I say I want to see numbers here. So each one of these now has a number by it, which means it has a reference point. You could say it has an index. And so now if I go all the way down, I can see right here that this line of code or this post I was looking for is on line 317. And so what this means for me is when I'm searching for these values, I don't need to think of just trying to find, oh, where is this one record? I can actually just skip down to the exact spot that I want. So this makes it much more efficient to be able to find what I'm looking for. I don't have to go line by line because the system essentially already has a mechanism for being able to search through it. Now, the true mechanism behind this is gets a little bit more into some more complex algorithms and data structures, and I'll show where you can find what that is. But what it allows the system to do is instead of just trying to go line by line and find it in a linear fashion, it can actually go and skip ahead and ignore a huge chunk of the records that are not applicable just by having this index. So you could think of an index essentially as a reference point. I'm going to get out of Vim and switch to MySQL Workbench. So right here, let's go and see our indexes because believe it or not, you've actually been using indexes this entire course. And many of the indexes are actually created by default, especially when you use tools like MySQL Workbench. So if I click on addresses and then click on the little inspect icon, this is gonna bring up all of the different data points that we've seen before. But you may notice here we have this indexes tab. If I click on this, this is going to show all of the columns in the table, but it's also going to show all of the indexes that we have in the table. So you can see that by default, 
whenever you create a table and you define a primary key, that is going to create an index. And right here, <coughs> and right here we have an index of primary key and we know that it is unique. And so right here you can see that it even has a key name of unique and here is the primary one and we can see its addresses underscore ID. So there are two indexes for here and then we also have one other index. We have a index on the foreign key. So by default when we define a foreign key in our table, MySQL automatically creates an index for it. And so the reason why we do that is because whenever you're running joins, if you do not have an index set on that foreign key, your join query is going to be incredibly slow because it's going to not just have to go and join the tables together, it's going to go have to perform that mapping every single time, which will be very slow. So by having an index, it allows you to very quickly and easily be able to search through it. And all of this is happening behind the scenes. That's, I want to reiterate that. These indexes are happening without you in many cases even having to do anything whatsoever. So right here we're able to simply take advantage of the performance benefits it has. But it is still important to understand what they are because there are times where you want to have indexes for columns that aren't just primary keys and aren't just foreign keys. So take for example, imagine that you wanted to very quickly be able to find postal codes. That's something that I could see being very practical. Well here in our addresses table we have this postal code. Now it is a var car and I will let you know that many var cars uh, var cars aren't going to have the same kind of performance with an index just because they're string based values but that doesn't mean you can't use them and you actually can come here and say create an index for selected columns and you can pick whatever algorithm you want the default one is typically fine now locking this is a important thing to think about. So locking what this means is the default which allows for as much concurrency as possible and this means that when this index is being utilized are we locking the record. So in other words say that you have one user who goes and makes a change to one of the addresses and then almost simultaneously you have another user that runs a query on that. So the first user goes and he changes the address from New York to Arizona. Another user almost at the same time runs a query to see how many users live inside or in New York. Well, if you don't have locking in place, then you're going to run into an issue because you may have that second user may run a query and the number may be off. That may not seem like a big deal, but imagine if that same kind of thing would happen with a ATM and a bank transfer occurs and a user tries to pull out money. You could have a lot of kind of messy components going into that. So locking is something usually you can just use the default locking scheme and you'd be perfectly fine. So this is uh, almost always you'll be able to be able to use these. Now non-unique is what we'd have to go here. You also have the ability to do unique which would be a horrible idea for a postal code. And then full text. Now full text is what you would do if you were building a search engine kind of feature. Here I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Just a regular all the defaults are perfectly fine and then you can click create and it will generate a index for you. So now this is one of the very first questions I get whenever someone asks me or you know whenever I'm teaching about indexes is if indexes make it so much faster to be able to query data why wouldn't we just want to index every single one of the columns and that if you've never worked with indexes that's a perfectly normal question to ask and the reason why you would not want to do that is because every single time for every index you have every time that you make an insert 
or an update. What happens is not only does it update the table, it also has to go and then update every single one of the indexes you have. So for just a few index indexes on a table, that's not an issue. But if you say you had five columns and you went and you had to update all five of those columns, that could lead to very slow write speed. So if you're updating a column, if you're at or updating a row or adding a new one, then you're going to maybe run into some latency whenever you're performing those type of tasks. So what the rule of thumb is, is whenever you want to have or whenever you have a column that gets searched very very often so for example a postal code or you know some type of some type of search and uh, index like an email address or something like that those can be good for indexing obviously all your primary keys and your foreign keys you want to index those regularly and so that is uh, you know that's kind of the common pattern and a good rule of thumb now it appears that right here my my SQL has uh, frozen when I tried to create that index, but that is the process by which you would create one. And so I hope this has been a good kind of walkthrough on indexes and how you can generate them, why they're important, when to use them, when not to use them, and how you can have a high level view of what they are in databases.